Now one thing that Brad and I both enjoyed in college was economics courses. And you know what? It really comes back to the farm to help us out because we're running the economics on everything. Is this worth doing? Is that worth doing? Where are we going to get a good return on our investment? Well, I would only say that I like the economics courses if I came out ahead on things. So if my investments <laughs> looked really good or something like that, I'm all for running economics. Uh, what I no, don't no, like no. is on our farm, we put out a bunch of fall fertilizer and guess what happened with the price? It dramatically dropped now. So unfortunately, it basically cost us more money than it could have if we would have waited till spring to apply fertilizer, but that's the way it goes. What we want to talk about a little bit today is let's say you haven't applied all your fertilizer yet and you're looking at, well, how can I save some money on this? Because financial conditions right now are kind of tight. So we're going to run through some economics real quickly on what you can save yourself on phosphorus fertilizer. Well, phosphorus has had a huge price decline from the summer highs that were well into the four digits. A lot of, a lot of times we were hearing $1,200 phosphorus and all of a sudden it drops to $500 a ton. The economics completely change. So what we look at for our farm First of all is, can we justify using the product at all? Can we get an economic gain in terms of yield? Can we get more yield gain than it costs to put on the fertilizer? And the next thing is, what's the cheapest way we can get this fertilizer on and the most efficient for our crop to take it in? Okay, let's just talk about a real world example from our farm. Last year on the farm, we averaged about 200 bushel corn on 1,500 acres. And on approximately 900 acres of soybeans, we averaged around 50 bushels. Now I was a little disappointed with the 50, it was our lowest yield in a few years, but that's what we got. So if you just run the simple math and say, okay, we left all the residue out in the field. We didn't bale any stalks or anything like that. We just took the grain off the field. Here's what actually left the field. On those 1,500 acres of corn, we had approximately 76 units of phosphate per acre that left the field. So grand total, that's about 114,000 units of phosphate. Now, if you divide that by, let's say we're going to put MAP on, that's 11.520. If we divide that number by 52%, we're going to need roughly 110 tons of MAP fertilizer to replace the amount of phosphorus that we took off the field. So I'm not talking about building the soil, anything else. All I'm talking about is replacing what we removed. Then we go to our soybean crop and we say, okay, on 50 bushel soybeans on 900 acres, we removed about 40 units of actual phosphate per acre divided by the 52% to get our MAP conversion. And we need roughly 35 tons of MAP. So the 110 in the corn, the 35 from the bean ground, that's 145 tons. For easy figuring, we'll use 150 tons. Okay, if we've got 150 tons of MAP that we're going to need for our farm, and I say we have $1,200 MAP versus $500 MAP, that's $700 you could possibly save on your farm, because a lot of fertilizer dealers are still at that 1200 bucks. That's a lot of money. 150 tons times $700, you're talking $105,000. So you say, I can save $105,000, I'm going to have to do a little work and spread my fertilizer, but I've still, even after I buy a brand new spreader, I probably have $90,000 left. That sounds like a good paying job. <laughs> 90 grand well, just to spread a little fertilizer. If this is the first time you're doing it, you say, wait a minute, I've got 150 tons of fertilizer, how do I get set up? to handle that, dump it right at the end of the field, right on the dirt, scoop it up with your skid loader into your spreader and spread it out on your field. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. You do it on a day where it's not raining and a day that you can get the load spread, which should be really easy to do, uh, you can definitely do it that way. Now, if you wanted to do something where you said, hey, I want to store fertilizer, I want to get myself set up with some nice stainless steel bins, you could sure do that. If you had 150 tons to use, like we're going to use, you could say, I want two 75 ton bins, spend 22 grand getting set up. You have a pretty decent setup for not yeah, that much money. Yeah, you're not going to get stainless steel bins for that kind of money, but 75 ton bins that are lined so you can actually store fertilizer in there, you'd probably spend around ten or $11,000 a piece. So yeah, if you wanted a couple bins to store 150 tons of fertilizer, if that's all you would need for the whole year, yeah, it really does not cost that much money. So what we're saying here today is, we're always on our farm looking for jobs that pay $100 an hour or more. If you can find those jobs, that's great, especially when you can do those things every year. Well, back probably 10, 12 years ago, we figured that we could do that on our own farm by spreading our own fertilizer. We've been spreading our own fertilizer ever since, and it every single year pays at least 100 bucks an hour. This particular year, it'll probably pay you $1,000 an hour buying your fertilizer from some dealer who's got high-priced fertilizer still sitting there as compared to buying it on the wholesale market and spreading it yourself. Well, when it comes to fertilizer, this year the prices have definitely come down, 
especially on things like phosphorus. So take a look at applying it for yourself on your own farm. The economics are great and it's really pretty easy to do. Well, another thing that's pretty easy to do is controlling our weed of the week, especially if you follow our tips. They're coming up later in the show.